Hello everybody. Welcome again to my weekly miniature painting video blog. I'm Doc Ian. This is Monday the 11th of April 2016 and I'm going to show you the miniatures I've painted since last week. And there is not a tremendous amount of them but I'll show them off anyway. First off we have the Guild Hounds for Malifaux which, uh, as you can see, the actual paint jobs on them are kind of slapdash, very simplistic, uh, just kind of stark highlighting. And to make them look a little bit better in total, I've added a lot of color to the bases to make them more interesting. Where's the last one? Oh, yeah. This one's perhaps a bit more interesting with his bronze armor. Yeah. Just really basic paint jobs. And also I painted up the the two sort of random dwarves that I got as part of another Kickstarter. Um, this one looks like kind of barbaric. He and he has he's got like open wounds in his arms. I I I just painted those dark. I didn't want to paint a lot of blood or pus or something. I didn't wasn't sure how um, if the, this guy's actually a zombie or is just I, I'm not sure what what he was. So I just kind of made it seem like he's been afflicted with some disease. Uh, this guy is more normal. He's healthy looking, even though bald. He has his dual axes and his big beard. And these six minis are, unfortunately, everything I've managed to complete in the past week. I have been busy doing other stuff, like reading a lot of <laughs> books. That, that needs to get done as well. Um, let's see where we are at with the works in progress. Now, this is the part where I tell you about my works in progress. And here you see the Dark Wizard. He has... I haven't done a whole lot to him. I've, I've attached the site and I've started base coating it. I'm, I think I finished the skull since last time. That wasn't done then, was it? And the actual shaft of, of, of the thing is not going to be... It, it's very simply, uh, very subtly highlighted. It has a base coat and one or two highlights on it, and I don't think it needs any more. It doesn't need to stand out. It's just a background for the important stuff, which is the blade and the skull and the vines and the flowers. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get cracking on finishing that. And as you can see, the sword is still the same as last time you saw it. Uh, other stuff, the Spawn Mother, not a whole lot has happened to her since last time you saw her, I think. I don't know why I'm dragging my feet with this model. I think it's because it's a little intimidating to have such a large expanse of uh, skin that still needs some sort of subtle shading. I'm just, but I'm just going to have to focus and, and uh, get to work on it. Uh, the other Malifaux model, the Hooded Rider, has simply had a few splashes of, of uh, base coats here and there. Uh, mostly a bit of metallic, like on the sword and on his, his uh, greaves. Uh, not much else. The troll, which is going to be an ice troll, is actually like 50% done. It, not not in, in surface area because all of the skin is left to do, but the skin is just going to be one color and uh, sort of the pebbles on his back, uh, a second color, and then details like the mouth and eyes. But I've done the metallic portions, I've done the leather and, and cloth bits hanging off here, and I've done the rock he's holding. Um, so essentially I've done all the stuff that needs dry brushing. Almost. I think I'm going to dry brush uh, his back as well. So that's the next thing. And then the, the actual skin will almost be the last thing I do. But uh, since this guy is fun to paint, uh, he'll certainly be done by next week. So my ambition is to finish out of these guys 
finish the Dark Wizard, finish the Troll, finish the Spawn Mother by next week. This guy, probably not realistic to think I can finish him by next week. He's going to probably take at least another week. And uh, let's see what kind of new stuff I'm going to put in the pipeline. And so it's time to take a look at all this new stuff I prepped and started to paint. These are all the uh, critters, the animals. Uh, well, not all of them. They won't fit in shot, all of them. But I'll show you the rest later. Uh, we have the gorillas, uh, the pumas, and the leopards. And they've been based... I, I, I painted the bases a slightly lighter dirt color than normal. I was thinking that, you know, they were in Africa, the savannah somehow. But then I realized not all of these should be native to Africa, but oh well. I painted them pretty much the same, all of them anyway. Uh, and here we have the gators. No, sorry, they're not gators, they're crocs. Crocodiles, which I've uh, primed off base, their bases because um, for their bases, I actually made a little bit of water running through it. So water effect. It originally I painted it a very clear blue or turquoise rather. But then I dirtied it down somewhat because I thought it didn't look quite natural. Um, now I'm maybe starting to regret it. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. But at least I know how I did the, 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 the nice blue effect and I can replicate it some other time for some other project perhaps. Uh, yeah, and finally, just sort of out of the blue, I decided to prep this girl. This is a hassle-free miniatures model called Ray, R-A-E, but I think you can tell, even though she's primed white, you can tell what she is, right? You know, the dress, and the hair, you know, uh, a certain red dress wearing blonde from Battlestar Galactica, which is why I, I made the base this sort of uh, steel grating thing, like she's maybe on a starship. Yeah, just for fun. I thought this would be an interesting side project. I'm planning out new projects. I, I, I feel like I need to slow down a bit, like not start prepping so much new stuff because I have something of a backlog to get through. And I, I have these terrain pieces that I've prepped and, and in some cases painted halfway and I feel like they're, they're on hold and I need to finish them. So for next week, I'm only going to prep a few models. And I have these left over from previous purchases. These are some giant spiders from Reaper that I bought thinking I would use them as eye spiders for Frostgrave. But the frost spiders are supposed to be furry and these are not. So I'm just going to paint them like normal giant spiders. And speaking of giant spiders, you can't see what this is. This is a kit from Harry Z Miniatures, which is a mixed metal and resin kit. Uh, this, this red thing is just some padding for transportation. This is actually the only part, the thing that's part of the model. This is the main body. Uh, of of the huge spider thingy in resin and lots of separate legs and I don't know claws mandibles not sure what these are or where they fit uh, we'll have to take a look at some pictures on the website perhaps I'll make it work and hopefully not make it upside down like the hooded writer <laughs> uh, anyway so, so uh, s keeping it simple for next week, sort of. The only new uh, miniature gaming related thing that arrived in my mail this week was this rule book and some dice uh, for a new game. Uh, well, a new set of skirmish gaming rules called Open Combat, which was the result of a Kickstarter that I backed. It's 
a relatively uh, brief book. It's something like, let's see how many pages it is, like 100 pages, including the appendices, like, like uh, uh, character sheets that you photocopy and the like. Uh, I, it's, you know, it looks nice. It has some, a few colored pictures. And um, like it's, the whole thing is in full color and glossy paper, so so it's uh, high has high production values. I have no idea how the rules work yet. I haven't had a chance to look at it, but we'll see. Oops. Um, and it has these special symbol dice for various things. Huh. They might be necessary. I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, as you've seen, I've I've sort of loaded up on maybe a few too many projects. As I as I've mentioned, I'm feeling a bit. Um, yeah, I've taken on too much. I, I'm I'm gonna try to to slow down the adding of new projects so that I have time to finish up my current ones. And I'm also going to, in the coming weeks, I think, gradually introduce a couple of new sort of, um, um, how should I call it, uh, project segments for this, uh, for this ramble. I mean, what, what I mean is, for example, I have, I have the, what I call the Malifaux Madness and Frostgrave Forces sections. I haven't been doing those lately because it's so scattered, but uh, Malifaux is like one continuous project for me. I'm, I'm always trying to have at least one Malifaux model in the works. So that's always going to be a segment of, of this video, um, even if I don't name it as such. While the Frostgrave Forces, I like alliteration, you might have noticed. Um, I, this is sort of winding down, perhaps, because I'm I'm kind of uh, feeling that I've painted enough for Frostgrave, though there are a few things more coming along. I can see sort of the end, the light at the end of the tunnel, and and so it, because that is winding down, I'm, I'm I need to st or well I, I I will start up some other. Um, um, types of miniatures to paint. For example, I've, I've mentioned that I want to, for my next role-playing campaign, run Ravenloft. I think I've mentioned that, right? Uh, so, uh, sometime soon, sometime this year, I'm going to start painting some more like undead and other monsters appropriate to that setting. What can we think of as the title for that? Ravenloft Rippers, perhaps. Or, well, I don't know. Something else on R, maybe. Um, <laughs> and, and I have a, a couple of other ideas of, of that nature. Um, yeah. But that will be it for this Monday. I don't believe I'm going to put up any other videos this coming week, so I'll see you next Monday. Until then, I'm Doc Yan. Have a nice week, and I'm signing off.